Hey, Josh, what is- Oh, f*** up! What the f***? Oh, Justin, I thought you were Ryan. You look amazing. What's wrong with your eyes? Drugs. What? I'm on drugs. Vitamins? Expired. It's a 93. That was a good year, but- It's a great year. God, how many did you take? What are you, a f***ing narc? No. Prove it. Oh, I, we're at work. Take it. No, 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 no. Don't be such a square, Tommy. Live a little. Who's Tommy? You are. Huh. God, you're so convincing. That's good. Go for a Betty. <laughs> yes. Oh, so much so chalk. Let's work through it, Tommy, baby. When is it supposed to hit? Yeah. Do you see me? Oh, do you see? You look so neat. Neat as a f**k, Toby boy. It's like a scene from Willy Wonka. <laughs> penis Wonka. Where? What? Where is the penis? <laughs> Willy Wonka. <laughs> 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 What's with them? Poppin' Bettys. <laughs> Again? And what's so funny? I don't know. But it's pissing me off. Josh is such a bad influence. Yeah, her face is so soft. <laughs> <laughs> Both Into the Spider-Verse and Across the Spider-Verse are some of the most beautifully animated films in recent memory. It's an incredibly specific style and definitely inspired a lot of the other animated films that have come out since that first one, which made us want to create our own version using live action footage. So we did. Do you see? Before we got our shot, we tried a few tests and found the best results were having somewhat soft lighting and adding an accent of color to match some of the Spider-Verse references we were looking at. We also added this top-down backlight for some extra detail and to make them pop from the background a bit more. And of course, decided to shoot this on green screen so we had more flexibility with what our background would be. But after shooting our plates on green screen, we'll bring our shot into After Effects and drop it into a new comp. For our animated face look, we want to have additional layers track and warp with his facial movements. And we'll use Mocha Pro for this, though you can also use a plugin like Lockdown for similar results. Pop it. Oh, no, take, you take, no. <laughs> <laughs> Inside Mocha, we'll draw around his head and neck down to the collar. If you aren't shooting on a green screen, you might need to keep this shape closer inside their edges to not have the background be tracked as well. But we'll check mesh, change the mesh size and make it uniform, then track forward. Once that's done, move back to the first frame and click these planar surface buttons. Go to the Stabilize tab, check Mesh Warp and Change to High before saving and exiting Mocha. I'm still, I still haven't blinked. <laughs> Don't you dare cut. <laughs> I'm still going. Next, we'll draw a rough mask around Justin with some feather and use key light to key him out. Now we'll duplicate this layer and pre-compose as Justin's face and move to the new comp. Inside this comp on his layer, we will go to Mocha Pro module, render, drop down, selecting stabilize, unwarp, and setting quality to high. This stabilizes our mesh warp so that we can apply effects to him before rewarping. This does disregard our masks, but that won't be an issue in this comp. For the character style, we want to make his eyes bigger and brighter, so we'll create an adjustment layer and mask around each eye, increasing the feather slightly. Using a curves effect, we will brighten up his eyes and use a tint to push it closer toward white. And because his face is stabilized, we don't need to alter the mask unless he blinks. Next, we'll add a new adjustment layer for distortion. Using the bulge effect, we'll place it over one eye and change the radius to our liking. Duplicating this effect, we'll move it over to the other eye and in our case, increase the radius and height a bit more. After our tests, what we found really useful is replacing his iris with a more animated look rather than keeping this distorted version. Oh, that is expired. 
changes a little trouble. So we'll drop in this AI eyeball we got out of Mid Journey, masking out the iris, scaling to match Justin's eye, and drawing another mask to intersect within his eyelid. Using a hue and saturation effect, we're gonna change the values to make it more of a brown color like Justin's real eyes, then duplicating this layer, moving over to another eye and altering the intersect mask to match. Back in the other comp, we can copy and paste the mocha effect to the pre-comp layer, this time setting the module to stabilize warp instead, adding motion blur back to our stabilized version. The only issue is the warp doesn't match our original footage exactly, so what we can do is, inside our pre-comp, use a solid layer with a feathered mask around just the affected area of Justin's face and set the blending mode to stencil alpha. This now warp tracks the eye area but keeps the remainder of the original footage visible for the rest of him. What do you mean? Was this funny? I can't tell. I'm blacking out. A final step to completing the eyes is creating another white solid layer. We'll hide the visibility and use the ellipse mask. Draw a few highlight areas for eye reflections, re-enable the visibility, and pre-compose moving all attributes. Copy and paste the same mocha warp to this layer to have the highlights track to the eye. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked about audio before last time in a beautiful love story dedicated to their lifetime plan. Adia's goal is to level the playing field by making the best, most trend-worthy music accessible to creators of any size. And now they're launching Audio Originals, which is an ongoing collaboration with industry music producers to continuously release exclusive songs crafted with creators in mind. They gave us a listen of some of what's to come, and it's really solid stuff, one of which you've heard already. Audio Originals' first drop will be next week, but again, the music you've heard in this episode is a preview of that. And of course, with Audio Pro, you get access to Audio Originals and 30,000 plus songs and sound effects for just $59 for the first year when you use the coupon code FILMRIOT70. So jump in the notes for the link and check it out for yourself. Yes. <laughs> I'm still not there. thought I was. <laughs> Another signature of the Spider-Verse look is having some defining lines around the facial features and other areas. To do this, we're going to double click our footage layer and making sure we are at frame one, we can use the paintbrush tool with a small brush size and a darker color of our actor's skin tone to paint some line details. You can do this as much or as little as you'd like. Into the Spider-Verse characters have a medium amount of lines around facial features, including some forehead wrinkles. Too many lines might steer away from the intended effect and look closer to something like Batman the Enemy Within. We'll follow the natural lines in Justin's face, changing the brush scale to make thinner details in some areas, as well as a few lines at the top of his shirt and buttons. Once we're done, we can close the layer window, copy and delete this paint effect, and create a new white solid layer, and paste the paint effect to it. Because of the big eyes effect from before, we also need to copy and paste the distortion adjustment layer above the solid layer, then pre-comp these together as Justin's lines. <sighs> Now we can copy and paste the same mocha warp effect to it so that the lines track with him. Set the blending mode to multiply and will lower the opacity slightly. Occasionally in the movies, they would have outlines around the character, somewhat separating them from the background or acting as a rim light. To do this, we're going to duplicate our footage layer and move to the top of the comp, delete the mocha effect and add a tint, setting the color to black. Use a drop shadow effect set to white, changing some of the settings to create an outline and we'll duplicate this and change the settings again to add a fainter version in the opposite angle. Set this layer to screen and for an additional outline, we'll duplicate it, scale it up, change position slightly and alter the shadow settings again. We'll lower the layer opacity as well as use a wiggle expression to have it randomly fade throughout the shots. Select both the Justin footage layer and the face comp and pre-compose these together as Justin. To make him look more animated, we'll first use a liquify effect and alter some of his proportions. Just make sure to copy and paste this onto the other layers. And if the actor is moving a lot, this effect will need to be keyframed or tracked. Phew, 
could have a yabba dabba do time. <laughs> Next, we'll use a cartoon effect, playing around with the setting until we're happy. Most of the different tests we tried needed different values, so there is no exact setting for this look. Just do it by eye. We'll use a curves effect to add brightness and contrast, a vector blur set to perpendicular, with a low amount to soften the cartoon edges slightly. And use a drop shadow effect to get a similar outer edge look to these references we were using, choosing a vibrant color and changing the distance and direction. Some areas of Justin's eyebrows get lost with these effects on, but the Spider-Verse character designs do have sharp and solid eyebrows. So you could fix this by jumping back into the face comp and using adjustment layer with masked eyebrow shapes and a curves effect to darken this area, giving the cartoon effect more information to work with. Or you could copy these masks and make a dark solid in the painted lines comp instead to get more solid eyebrows. For the background, we again use Mid Journey, generating iterations of an office room in an animated background style, giving us a lot of great results, but we finally settled on this one for Justin's shot and this for Josh's. Dropping the image to the bottom of our comp, we'll scale it to fill the frame and use a hue and saturation effect to shift the hue and boost the saturation. They're doing coke off the VCR? <laughs> <laughs> it's nostalgic! <laughs> to match the pinkish purple light we have on the side of Justin, we're gonna create a new adjustment layer and mask this area around the window, increasing the feather and adding a curves effect to push it closer toward the pinkish color. On Justin's comp layer, we're gonna use a new curves effect to closer match our background and a hue and saturation to add more color and shift the magenta light to a pinker hue. Into the Spider-Verse cleverly opted to lean into a drawn comic book look by often having these halftone style dots appear in the highlights and diagonal lines in the shadows to resemble hand-drawn shading. To do this, first pre-comp all of these layers together, create a new white solid for our dots and apply the CC ball action effect then lower the size and increase the spacing. Duplicate the pre-comp for our highlights mat and apply a tint effect to make it black and white, a curves to crush the shadows, a fast box blur with an increased amount, and another with a high blur amount, but lower the effect opacity to mix between the two blur effects. Lastly, another curves to really boost the brightness. I'm still chewing. <laughs> Set the dots to use the highlights mat as a luma mat, meaning they only appear in the brightest areas of our shot and set the blending mode to soft light, making it more subtle. For the shadow lines, if you start with having no layer selected, using the pen tool, we can set a point at the top corner of our frame and make another point at the opposite corner. This automatically creates a shape layer. Then you can choose the color and thickness of the line up here. And to add multiple lines, you can add a repeater, increasing the number of copies and changing the transform position to control how close or far apart they are. To fill the frame, move the path down below our frame, use another duplicate of the pre-comp, this time as a shadow mat, again using tint, curves, and blur to define which areas we want the lines to be visible in. Set the lines to luma mat inverted using the shadow mat pre-comp, and again, set the blending mode to soft light. The Spider-Verse characters are animated on twos, meaning each frame of animation lasts two frames, so for 24 frames per second, only 12 are new frames. We can do this using a new adjustment layer with a posterized time effect and a frame rate of 12. And in the movies, they have a nice chromatic separation. So with another adjustment layer, we'll use Red Giant Universe's RGB separation with a high radius and a slight distortion, but using a feather mask to subtract the eye area as we found the RGB effect too strong here. Lastly, we finish everything with a LUT to make the colors pop, giving us this. Do you see me? Oh. This really is one of my favorite effects that we've ever done. It reminds me of things like A Scanner Darkly and the 1978 film for Lord of the Rings, the idea of converting live action into animation, but in a more modern way. And there's so many different applications that this could be used for. But that is it for today. Links to everything in the notes below. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat. Ah! Oh, fuck! I thought you were <laughs> <laughs> I, I had respect that you stayed in it.